Hi, you're listening to Behind the Headlines, a weekly news talk show hosted by the Express News Group, publishers of the Southampton Press, the East Hampton Press, the Sag Harbor Express, 27East.com and Express Magazine, and featuring distinguished journalists from the East End to discuss what's news on the North and South Forks of Long Island. I'm Bill Sutton. I'm the managing editor of the Express News Group. I'm joined today by my co-host, Annette Hinkle, the arts and living editor of the Express News Group, filling in for Joe Shaw. Good morning, Annette. Good morning, Bill. Our panelists this week, uh, Denise Civiletti, editor of Riverhead Local. Good morning, Denise. Good morning. Joe Workmeister, staff writer for Newsday. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. And Beth Young, editor and publisher of the East End Beacon. Good morning, Beth. Hello. Um, so let's we've uh, it's it's how many days left till the election? Is anybody anybody doing the the countdown? I, I'm, I'm done counting. Let me ask Chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen or so? Yeah, something like that, right? Uh, we're 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 closing in, and obviously we're all looking at at the big elections. We had, we had considered uh, it seemed like a sl- slow news week locally, so we considered just doing a dance party today. Um, but, uh, I, I think we'll probably find some, some issues to, uh, to talk about. It's a hard um, to dance I, on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, remember we're on TV as well. We're on public okay. access. Okay. So, um, um, so, and you too. so it, it, you in too. addition, in addition, obviously to, you know, to the, the presidential and the congressional elections, which we're all watching pretty closely, there are a number of propositions on the ballot this year in in the, in the towns that we cover um in the, in the county um that um that may not uh people may not still be aware of um so be sure you turn that ballot over and, and look at those what are what are some of the propositions this year denise well i the, only the, know the of big one the big one is the them. county water one right well i mean it's all a matter of perspective bill <laughs> <laughs> proposition one is uh, essentially the state's uh, version of the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, ah. It's um, a um, proposition that it would add to the existing protections against discrimination on the basis of like race or religion, the, the kind of the standard ones that we've all known for decades and decades now, and it would add to that <clears throat> um discrimination, you know, the right against discrimination on account of sex, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, um, and um, a lot of uh, what I would consider to be sort of triggering uh, (laughs) subjects for people, um, uh, you know, more more conservative people uh, with more conservative viewpoints or people on the the so-called right. and um, so it has, uh, in fact, a lot of opposition from that quarter, um, notably by a former congressman here on the East End and um, a failed uh, gubernatorial candidate, uh, Lee Zeldin, and um, other other people in, in his corner. Um, this is, uh, you know, they're opposed to this Equal Rights Amendment in addition to the, to the New York State uh, the Equal Rights Amendment, the constant, the state constitution. What, what, um, what, 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 what is the opposition? Not, not to. Uh, um. Well, I mean, you know, there's, there's a great. De- we all know there's a great deal of opposition to surrounding any, any notion of um, the rights of transgender individuals um, to, um, you know, like to, to to have protected status, to have access to care, um, et cetera. I mean, it's, you know, that's been percolating throughout our, our politics locally and nationally for quite some time now. Mm-hmm. Um, so but, the, but this I, proposition would, is this about like equal pay and like um, um, an inability to fire somebody because yeah, it protects against all unequal treatment. I'm looking so at the, I'm looking at the text of it and equal pay or dismissal yeah. from um, unfair dismissal from a job. That's um, correct. To protect against unequal tri- treatment based on the, you, you know, uh, in addition to race and religion, but like, you know, ethnicity, national origin, yeah. age, disability, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, pregnancy and pregnancy outcomes, as well as reproductive health care and autonomy. 
Uh, this was uh, apparently introduced by Senator Brad Hoylman Siegel. Um, so but I guess with the, uh, with the national ERA sort of languishing and not yet codified yeah. at the federal level, this is sort of New York taking the matter into its own hands, just as if a state might codify abortion rights. I feel like this has been put up, uh, not maybe it didn't make it onto the ballot in the past, but I feel like this has been kicking around for a while. I remember interviewing uh, Anthony Palumbo about his opposition to this, uh, you know, some years ago now. I don't I remember exactly one. A lot of the opposition probably mirrors that of Phyllis Schlafly, who was anti ERA in the 70s. And one of her fears were at that time were gay marriage and um, gender neutral bathrooms. Um, well, you know, I, I, re- I was thinking about that recently. I was telling Alec, who is, um, you know, sadly for me, too young to remember so many of these things. <laughs> but um, like that was like the big thing that I remember hearing when I was like, you know, young and about the equal the ERA. This was like going back to the 70s. Right. And they were talking about we would have to have, you know, we would have to share bathrooms. There wouldn't be men's and women's rooms anymore. There would be just gender neutral bathrooms. I don't think they put it that way, but, you know, and so we didn't get the ERA because we were afraid of bathrooms. And now like everywhere you go, there are gender neutral bathrooms anyway. Exactly. You know, like, well, they they use that as the big fear tactic too, when you're talking about trans transgender, um, you know, equality that, that these, that, that, you know, that, um, yeah, the, the children yeah. are going to be un, unsafe in you know in in you know in in bathrooms if if transgender people are using them and it just to me it's just such a big red herring it's just so so ridiculous it's, it's it's almost like people have never been in a bathroom before and right seeing what happens in a bathroom or have been to Europe <laughs> like, yeah trans unisex bathroom you know it's interesting yeah. we, we, we did have them here so yeah we did one of our podcasts with um senator gillibrand a few weeks ago and she's a big proponent of trying to get the er the national era finally um through and it is through that's interesting it's been ratified by all of the states that it needs to be ratified by i think 38 virginia being the last one in 2020 and now it's just a matter of the actual amendment being um um, registered with the archivist of, I guess, the Library of Congress or whoever does that. And they they are waiting for a presidential, I guess, um, go ahead. Um, so I'm kind of surprised that Biden has not done that yet. Um, it's a matter of just stamping the legislation. And as uh, Senator Gillibrand said, you know, then immediately the lawsuits suits start and they would start anyways, no matter what it what um, when it was finally, you know, stamped, approved. Um, but it was, it could have been done, I guess, back in 2020. But, you know, of course, um, at that time, President Trump would not push that through to the archivist. But I'm interested to see whether or not President Biden, in his days between the election and leaving office, might say this is going to be like his, one of his last acts as president. I wouldn't be surprised. So I think we should watch that because I think mm-hmm. that could be very interesting. This this uh, proposition uh, one that's on the ballot um, went all the way up to the state's highest court um, to uh, Republicans challenge it, trying to get it off, and and it, that obviously wasn't successful. But the, you know there was a a, a challenge to this in the, in the courts that ended up in the court of appeals, and um, they, you know the, the Republicans tried to get it dismissed on kind of a technicality. It seems like and didn't didn't work. Yeah, they're probably not happy that there's an amendment just ready to go that would basically do this nationally. Yeah. And, and I, as you're saying, I guess, you know, the kind of basis for this was really protecting protecting those abortion rights. And Republicans have tried to kind of flip the script to make it more of a transgender thing. To So that's mm-hmm. what people are well, well, you know, going to well, focus on. One of the things you'll probably be seeing more of in the next couple of weeks is um, um, there are a lot of groups that are handing out signs that say "Save Girls Sports Vote No" on Proposition One. So those oh, are the things we're going to be fun. seeing. Uh, probably, I've seen yeah. s- s- uh, quite a number of them already. So they're starting to pop up. So that's but nothing about promoting yeah. equal pay for women. God forbid, you know. Yeah. So, so is that, that? Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the new, uh, like, in, mm-hmm. instead of the unisex bathroom thing that we heard back in the seventies, which now we have. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe that's the new fear fear tactic. I also know. feel like I also feel like they can pull, they pull in like more people on the left with that too. You know, right. well, it's oh. com- it's confusing messaging. 
yeah well yeah. that's you know well especially get- after the you know the the boxing and the and, and the olympics and that wasn't that long ago and that that kind of you know put a put a put a face on it and and that you know and that woman wasn't transgender right i was was gonna say like that woman was also not american by the way so i don't see how passing anything in this country will affect the laws in algeria but i could be wrong right but she wasn't she wasn't transgender no she wasn't she wasn't wasn't. no so what was the problem she just looked masculine she looked masculine she, she had some blood work that came back i think it's with high testosterone levels. Yeah, she had been she had been disqualified from an earlier yeah. tournament, and it was kind of a sh- 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 it was like a, the way I think it was a Russian worked. organization that had yeah. Just her. Well, part of the problem is this is protected health information that we're not getting the details about. Yeah. So it, was it, it a case just, of like illegal doping, kind of like taking? No, no. no I, I think it's a chromosome thing. It, it's okay. you know, some some women have have um you know that high testosterone level and, and it, it has to do with yeah you know and and, and I, I think when you know with with the boxing anyway and i'm trying to remember it i i, I read up on it when it when it was happening but it's a, it's a while ago that um you know this is just a, a chromo, chromo, <laughs> chromosome thing with with some women that you know that they have um you know different chromosomes that lead to high testosterone levels and and it, traditionally, you know, some of these sports like boxing, if if you had that high level, then you know, then you weren't able to to compete or whatever. But you know, I um, I, I guess you know, for for you know, that's something that that um, that the sports, you know, boxing needs to you know regulate or or whatever. But it just seems like that's all used as a red herring for you know, just to try to. Um, I'm old enough that I can't believe there's women's people. boxing. Let yeah. me just say that. Well, like, and by the way, that that same boxer did not win in the last Olympics. You know, right. so the idea that there's some kind of a superior. I mean, yeah. obviously a very good boxer, but nobody made a comment in 2020 or whatever year they actually held those Olympics when she did not um, take a gold. So anyway, anyway, yeah. Well, here's that's where we're at, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, that's prop, prop one. That are... <laughs> it, it's it, I, I, I don't know. It's a, <laughs> it, it's hard for me to grasp sometimes. But I mean, I mean, we all have <laughs> we, we all have <laughs> we all have you know for for guys we all have women in our families and you know and women you know I I, I don't know I mean it it just. I, I, yeah, what are you saying, Bill? You're not quite there yet. I mean, I, to formulate trying, the thought, you, I mean, it just we're all we're all the same, right? I mean, and and how do you if you have you know if you're if you're a, a a conservative guy, how do you not want equal rights for you know for for the women in your family, for your daughters, for your you know, um, I, I, I don't know. Some I mean, people don't I, have I any problem with that at, all. at work while I was pregnant. Wait, say that again, Breath. Um, I dealt with a lot of trouble scheduling work and being unable to 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 work while I was pregnant. So I I I I feel strongly that you know women who want to support their children while they're pregnant should be encouraged to do so. Yeah, you, you feel like you were punished at your job for being no. I yeah. I mean, there were there were certain. I lost a lot of hours. I lost some work on account of it. Mm. And and it was very hurtful to my family um, in the very early days of my son's life. So I uh, I feel really strongly that that has to be protected. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a lot of other women have experienced that too. Sure. I don't think I'm alone. So. All right. So that's proposition one. What are some of the other propositions? Let's... Mm-hmm. I only know of one other one. Am I out of out to lunch on this? I, the, there's the one the sewer, the countywide sewer district, and the which I think is a really important one. Yeah. yeah. Well, so was Prop One, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here he goes to meeting one. women again. Um, we're out here. <laughs> Certainly not what I meant. I meant. Yeah, I know. It's I know. Very important. Okay, please, can you explain this? Count, we uh, like it out east. Oh gosh! <laughs> or uh, read it if you need to read it. Maybe uh, that's so. What... So it it um it it implements a what was it a quarter percent sales tax? Point point one two five percent. That's it. Eighth of a penny. Yeah. Eighth of a penny. Yeah. Um, okay. That would that would pay for 
sewer districts and um, and uh, advanced septic systems. It, it, it will go county. to a dedicated fund. It's coming back to me um, for a countywide sewer district or a countywide wastewater management district right. that will go. I think half to is that right? Uh, H- half and half. I think yeah was the was the compromise uh, improvements and half to uh, the um, innovative alternative septic. Uh, systems that um, people are, you know, that the county wants homeowners to convert to. Um, so I wonder and, how they divide it. Like, is this more of an east west thing? Is it like, you know, do you, we know well, how they. Well, because the western part of the county, yes, because the western part of the county is more, uh, has more yeah. sewers, has more yeah. sewer mains and more sewer plants. And the people traditionally on the east end don't want sewer districts and sewer plants and sewer mains because that uh, induces high density, you know, higher density development. So that has been, oh, sorry, that has been, a, that was a bone of contention. And the way this was originally proposed, the bulk of the funding, I think 60% was going to go to um, the, the septic portion, the septic system portion of it, and uh, the lesser to sewer district improvements, sewer plant and improvements. And there were some West End legislators that went bonkers about that county legislators and it it got you know the thing got torpedoed at the right. end of the legislative session and then was res- when when uh, balone sorry when balone was uh county exec this was his baby basically and you know septic czar peter scully uh and and you know so then it got reintroduced it was amended and reintroduced um with this 50 50 split Basically, that was the basic change, and it required an amendment to the state law that enabled it, you know, that authorized it. So it was a bit of it was a bit to, uh, you know, undo. And um, but this, uh, I guess, Thiel and whoever else got it, got it put through in Albany. And then the county legislature was able to adopt it locally and get it on the ballot in November because it does require voter approval. So I guess theoretically, though, some of that sewer money could go to that the uh, Riverside project, right? Maybe. Yeah. The one that. Yeah. So. Well, and and you know, and, yeah. and all the all the other villages that are looking for sewers, Southampton's okay. looking for village, East Hampton um, yeah. village is, is looking for sewers. Um, I, I I mean, if this if this passes, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of million dollars, you know, eventually that are just going to go into this pot to help, um, you know, to help you know, pay for, for sewers and septics, that's going to tremendously, I, I think, um, improve, you know, the, the water quality um, all across, you know, the county. Yeah, I see your projection that says uh, would raise an estimated $6 billion through yeah. 2060. Wow. So yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that money can be used to leverage money in the Environmental Bond Act as well. So it has a multiplying effect. As well. So talk, explain that. Well, the New York Environmental Bond Act, I don't remember the exact number, but it was $4.2 billion. Mm. This is money that it can be used for environmental projects, but they often require matching local funds. So oh, there you go. Use yeah. as a match, yeah. So it's, it's a big deal. It sure. really is. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's it goes to show out just a little bit, um, you know, it would be what... Uh, 12 and a half cents on a hundred dollar purchase. So, you know, it's not a, an amount of money that you would really notice, but you know, when you add it all up, it can make a big difference. And, you know, as we've seen with these rollouts of these innovative uh, advanced uh, wastewater systems, it's, it's hard for people to, you know, come up with the money to put these things in their houses and, and upgrade. And, and, and so if, you know, if we're not doing it you now, what what is what is the long term water quality going to look like on Long Island if, if we can't right. you know aggressively try to you know make these improvements and how, you can't do it without the money right exactly I mean and there were I think the towns were offering some rebates for those those systems and I think and uh, you would you had got one right but but it was hard get to get that. the rebates and you needed to have come up with the cash up front no, I don't for- I don't think we had we didn't have to pay for the full system up front no um, but we have to pay for all the engineering. I think uh-huh. up front and then you get reimbursed on that. Um, but it's, it's really difficult. I mean, you know, it was like a full-time job for my husband um, just to get the permits and to work with all of, you know, make sure everything was in place. Um, it's not an easy process. And then a lot of that, that outlay that, that we had to do was definitely the upfront costs in terms of, you know, getting, 
the surveys and getting the company to come out and um, figure out where it was going to go. And it's, it's, it's a bit did of work. You get a, did um, you get a rebate from East Hampton town? Yeah. The whole thing was covered hundred percent. And again, like the bulk of, I think the system itself was like, I don't know, $25,000. We didn't have to cut a check for that. That wow. that came right from the program. And then, and then we just submitted all of our um, bills from all of the, pr- the uh, preparation work that we did and what um, the County didn't p- pick up the town of East Hampton did. I think right down to the grass seed, the pan- plan on oh. top of it. So wow. um, I, uh, yeah. I had it done as well. And my system was uh, $44,000 for a wow. 600 square foot house in Flanders. And it wow. took um, it took a long time. It took more than a year to, right. to get it all squared away. Uh, a lot of details. And um, I think Southampton has since changed the program where the rebate can go directly to the installer. But at the time, yeah, that's all. at the time we Theory. had got the money and can be reimbursed. There were also those tax qu- questions of taxable income, right? I right. Guess yeah. That were yeah, like, you know, right. recently that, was gnarly. that was reversed. We got a yeah. nice chunk back from that. Yeah, they were and yeah, it's interesting about that. Like if they really want it, like these SD, these um, these ADUs, the accessory dwelling units to happen, you got to have that system in. You know, like if this is really going to be a way that we approach affordable housing you can't do that like we we um we we did a little pool house in our back we couldn't have gotten permission to do that had we not had that system installed so that's an an, i don't know if anyone's connected those dots but you can't really do an accessory dwelling unit unless you've got an ia system um at this point all all new major you know anything they considered major improvement requires an ia system now whether even you know even if you're not putting in excess control, like, and, so, mm-hmm. let's just consider this for a moment, not to be, I don't know what, what I am here, but I mean, there are plenty of barriers as you can like attest to, right? Like there are so many barriers to this, some of which are financial, some, some of which are time, you know, set time, cons- you know, uh, consumption of your time. Right. So the people who are going to find it hardest to access this are, the people who are lower income people in areas that are lower income areas, right? right. They're not going to have the money up front to get, you know, lay it out to get reimbursed. It's like having a tax credit. Um, it's, it's, they're not going to have the time to right. pursue something like this. Um, and then when you think about how this is being funded, it's being funded disproportionately because sales tax is inherently a regressive tax. It's being mm-hmm. funded disproportionately by lower income people. Like twelve cents on a hundred dollar purchase to middle income people or wealthy people is very little, right? I mean, it's a, you're not going to feel it, but lower income people feel sales tax a lot more. It's a regressive tax, so like that's just like a. It's just I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure exactly what I'm trying to say, other than it disproportionately would, affects be, poor poorer people. Yeah, it's, I would maybe argue good. that maybe what some of the money should go to is setting up divisions within the municipalities where somebody shepherds these projects through for people. Maybe mm. you don't, you know, it's part of town government or what you could do with that money is that you really handhold um, people who are putting in these IA systems and really help them get through the process, you know? Yeah. I, I think, think it's that would- hard for government to get involved with the private industry side of it. And one of yeah. the frustrating things that, that, that I dealt with was, you know, and I've heard that I've heard that other people hear this too. You know, you call an installer and you ask how much it's going to cost, and they say, "Well, how big a grant did you get?" Yeah, um, <laughs> we got that. So, we were, ours was for like so, how many how many bathrooms do you have? But right, um, yeah, but I mean, how yeah. The, yeah. the the price has gone up as the amount of government funding for it has gone up, and um, yeah. it's still cheaper than sewering, but. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the if the individual homeowners are laying this out and and waiting to be reimbursed, it's it's not going to work in areas that it really needs to work. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially in the back bays of this of the Peconic Estuary, like Flanders, Aquabog, downtown Riverhead, um, Riverside. Riverside. Yeah, um, th- those are the areas that really need it. Yeah, yeah. Denise, I mean, does River a sewer? They have a they have a sewage treatment plan or no? Yeah, for, head, yeah. Sewer head does right. Not the nineteen thirties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The but oldest they, ones. But maybe there's some of those properties like along the bays that are not connected to that. Or do you That's have a lot correct. of? I, the, the sewer district is 
more or less central Riverhead. It's like downtown. Uh, downtown. And, and, well, because, you know, that's all there was to Riverhead when they first built it. But yeah. they've extended it into um, like Route 58, areas of Route 58. But it's largely not north of Route 58 very much. Uh, or uh, um, And you it's know, not along East. West Main Street yet, which they is still, big. There's a lot of houses on West Main Street, right, right on the yep. river. And a lot yeah. of failing septic systems right on the river. I bet. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, maybe this isn't perfect, but but I think certainly, um, you know, I, I think that um, um, a lot of the environmentalists yeah. are, are certainly in, in favor of it. And, you know, and, and it, it's um, some of the details maybe can be worked out, but you've got to start with the money, right? So if the money is there, then maybe you, yeah. you know, you address some of these some and of these issues and some so of these much, problems. It was so much work for them to get this through the legislature twice and through right. the through through the state legislature twice, through the county legislature twice. And it, it it's an important thing. And yeah, yeah you're right. Once the yeah. once what, I mean, what does it what does it mean? They can make the program work better. What does it mean for the bays, Beth? I mean, I mean it just gets rid of all not all of it, but it gets rid of a lot of that nitrogen, right? If if you're if you're yeah, sewering the bays are facing so many issues right now, and this is one of the really big ones, and and it's going to help a lot. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. we can't control we can't control rising water temperatures. We can't control the amount of rainfall we're getting, but we can control the amount of nitrogen going into the bay. The other thing, I mean, another big source of nitrogen, maybe even bigger, is is also just run, runoff, fertilizer runoff. My God, like, and uh, but we don't seem to have the will to deal with that right i mean um i mean mm -hmm. I, I think it's been i think they've found that most of most of the nitrogen is coming from septic systems yeah yeah that's, i thought it was i thought the last the the scully balone study had the the opposite i thought it was still uh, but anyway we'll do it in an addendum yeah. to this. We, we should <laughs> i think i think gobler i think gobler and, and he's the the big on the on the south shore looking at the bays and stuff i mean his oh, uh, yeah. I, I think he's he's been saying that it's it's mostly septics i mean it's definitely a huge source they're yeah. also developing a less expensive uh system that's not only less expensive to install I don't know the status of that. I was thinking about that the other day. It's also doesn't require electricity to operate. And he did a like a presentation about a year ago on that. And um, they were, you know, testing it and stuff. So I'd be interested in knowing. Do you know anything about that, Beth? You're our resident I think it's a expert. box of wood chips. Yeah. <laughs> but like, has that got advanced? At um, all, I or? think there was there there. I think they got some kind of preliminary approval from the health department. I don't know the latest. Yeah. Uh, that I would be very cool. Shelter Island, they did a test years ago. And I think that that, I don't know if that's the same system, but it was this very interesting, um, like gravel lined pit that um, had piping but going through it. I don't think it required electricity. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's the same thing that he's talking about, but. There, there, science is always coming up with new, amazing things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and again, if the cash is there, then then maybe that helps with some of that too. Mm -hmm. um, some of the more innovations. Um, you're listening to Behind the Headlines on WLIWFM. I'm Bill Sutton from the Express News Group. My co-host today is Annette Hinkle from the Express News Group. Our esteemed panelists: Denise Cibaletti from Riverhead Local, Joe Workmeister from Newsday, and Beth uh, Young from the East End Beacon. Um, so let's let's move on. I, I think a, a bunch of us, Joe, you wrote about it, and and so did Beth and and Twenty Seven East. The um, the proposed Liberty Gardens uh, concerned housing project that was proposed on County Road Thirty Nine in in Southampton, um, and was um, rejected after a couple of years of study by the Southampton Town Board earlier this year. The uh, the developer concerned housing filed a federal lawsuit um, in, in the past week um, challenging that decision and saying that um, that the rejection they thought was uh, was discriminatory, right? Yeah, so basically challenging uh, the decision on uh, you know, federal fair housing uh, laws, um, basically saying that the, you know, the decision, um, you know, violated the American with Disabilities Act and the Fair Housing Act, uh, which have you know, pretty strong protections. And, um, 
you know, trying to get this decision basically overturned and and trying to frame this as the town um, uh, denying this zone change based on not wanting the type of people who would live in this development, particularly these veterans, um, most of whom would have some sort of, um, you know, um, mental disability. And so Mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's what, how they're challenging it. And in, uh, from, from what I could understand, it seems like, um, by filing this suit, they hope to maybe kind of restart some conversations with the town and, you know, use this to kind of as some leverage maybe to, um, get them back to the table to uh, see if they can maybe come to a solution, figure out a new way to get this project, um, you know, back on, back on track, you know, in, in some way. And, um, and from, from what I heard too, the, the Liberty gardens and concerned housing was basically up against the deadline for the statute uh, of limitations to file this. So they kind of had to get this rolling now, otherwise uh, the, time would have elapsed and mm. they wouldn't have been able to do it. So, you know, they had to do it now and kind of get that, get that going. So at least they had this you know, litigation there, you know, but I don't think either side really wants a long drawn out multi-year um, court case out of this. So, uh, you know, if, I don't know if there's a solution to be had, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the town board members were pretty adamant that they didn't think this was the right location for this type of project. For, right. You know, number of concerns, traffic mm-hmm. and, so, but, so I mean, so so the project just for the for the listeners, the project I, was was it fifty units? Was that the final number? I think it was right, fifty, yeah, fifty units down half, from sixty. Right, half half would be reserved for um for for disabled veterans, and and half would be kind of uh, uh like a workforce affordable housing. workforce yeah. housing. Um, and and but but Beth, I mean, you know, Joe mentioned that the 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 um the town board's denial of of the zone change was they said based on um you know the traffic concerns and and the location of of uh you know of the proposed development up on county road 39 um with with the only egress being right onto county road 39 and anybody who's driven on that road um in the morning or the afternoon knows that it can be um you hold you put your life in your hands driving on well, that. Road. I mean, Southampton initially solicited uh, an application from Concern right. uh, back in 2017, and I think part of the issue is that the the people who voted against it, most of them are brand new to the board, right? And um, so uh, you've got three new new board members who are looking at this, and Cindy McNamara who. Uh, she was opposed from day one, I think. Yeah, she, but she also wasn't on the board when they initially solicited. So the 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 only vote for it was Tommy John Scavoni, who was on the board when they initially solicited the application. Um, so you've got a whole di- whole different philosophy from the current board than from the board that initially um, requested this. There was also a ton of public opposition. Um, a lot of it was very um, incendiary, and um, you know, just kind of talking about uh, not wanting specific types of people living Mm. here so that's not helpful um and uh in terms of the traffic concerns that's going to be a concern with anything that you build on camera you know it's a problem the road is a problem what, when, we're, we're proving Mercedes dealerships on County Road, right. proving all kinds of development on County Road 39. When when, when I... the proposal first came came up, though, and I, and I remember it, there there was talk there would be an egress uh, on on County Road 39, but they were also talking about two other possible um, routes back down down near near Hillside, and those you know, people living in that area objected. And then there was another offshoot from from the other side that would have maybe lessened some of the traffic concerns. Um, and, and those, um, you know, those were rejected and, you know, and so at, at the end, I mean, they were looking at just County road 39 and I think that, right. um, you know, that looked kind of problematic. Did I um, ask if some of the objections had to do- there, it would be right before the uh, next light at the Seven Eleven, and 
That's yeah, I mean, yeah, you're talking not a couple, a hundred feet, right? I mean, I yeah. don't know how you could, you couldn't put a light in. Yeah. I'm sorry, Annette, what were you saying? I, I was just going to say from the town's perspective, was some of their objection, the fact that so many units were going to go to the veteran population that would probably involve, I don't know if this is true, would it involve moving veterans out who already, who already live west of Southampton, in which right. case... It doesn't. So, I mean, and then so I think maybe did they think they were going to get more workforce housing for people that actually so, work in the area instead so, of. Um, so the Express make- News Group editorialized against the project and in, in, um, in, in an editorial that was titled this was a, more than a year ago that was entitled Bait and Switch. And um, when when the project was first proposed, um they were they were talking about i think 60 units and they were talking about and i'm trying to remember the number maybe maybe 15 of those units would be um for veterans they were t- it was proposed as mostly workforce housing um for local you know for the local workforce with some veterans housing and over time that um that changed and it it started to be you know it became a 50 50 thing and then it was whether it was intended or not from the beginning um it may not have been revealed that you know that the veterans there would be would be um would be veterans who would require um more more services the you know disabled veterans there would be um you know people on staff i i don't want to i don't want to characterize it. I, I, I mean, these, these are people that would have in-house services um, and not just, not just vets living, living in these, um, right. in, in these just units. 25 people. I'm sorry. Well, it's not just 25 people. But I mean, how many 50, people, 50, 25 veterans. Right. Well, oh, 25 units would be reserved for veterans, yeah. but then they have families. Well, I just, and- yeah, I just wondered if part of the, I'm just trying to think from the, the point of the town board is like, was there fear also that you, you know, we don't have a ton of great um, services for, um, for, you know, mental services and, and um, that kind of thing on the East end. It just seems like maybe taking a population that's closer to a bigger population center and moving them out to the East end would not mm-hmm serve them all that well i mean that's just my thinking is that i, I think that was the concern of some of the some of the neighbors certainly in that i think concerns argument was that these would go to local veterans i don't know um i don't know if there was a mechanism in place or I, think in the, mechanism. I think in the lawsuit they tried to say that they believed based i forget what the number is but based on how many veterans there would be in southampton that they were confident that you know a, if not most a higher percentage of them would go to local veterans but you know yeah. yeah, is that I, I, would that happen? You know, I don't know I, for sure. I I personally feel very strongly about this because um, my son's father is a disabled veteran, and mm. he is from Southold, and he had to move to Medford in order to be in a place that could care for him. Mm. So he would have been a good candidate. That's what I'm wondering: is yeah. there enough of a population locally of disabled veterans that would have been able to take the units? Um, I don't know if that. I mean, I, I I would say concern for housing would say yes to that question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but but I, I think some of the concern also, I mean, along the same same lines was was, um, you know, uh, first responder, you know, response, ambulance response, fire response. If you've got um, if you've got veterans who are going to need more services or it might might require, um, you know, ambulances, first response, that type of thing, that that, that might be a tax on, um, uh, you know, the you know the uh the 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 ambulance fire departments you know there um i feel like that discussion just never really happened though about you know what i mean like i didn't hear much about the number of disabled veterans who could use the apartments and you know what i mean like did that debate really ever yeah it was pretty it was pretty vocal and i mean a lot of people i mean there were a couple public hearings on it and and certainly um if you read the Letter to the editor section in the Southampton Press. There was a lot of um, a, a, a strong debate, vit, um, vitriolic debate. I, I think is that is that a word, or did I just word. did I invent word. that? I think there was. A, there, there was. There, I mean, people were very emotional about it, and I'm not sure that 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 was warranted. 
Um, yeah. You know, and, and all these issues, I mean, it comes back to, if you're talking about the lawsuit, I mean, the, the town certainly would argue that it was just about it was about location and, and environmental concerns, traffic concerns, that type of thing. But I, I think certainly um, the neighbors were very concerned about um, one you know, of the things they did bring up. Uh, the town board members did bring up in their denial was that there was a sort of a handshake agreement with the neighboring um, nursing home to use their septic mm-hmm. system and that, that they didn't feel that that agreement was um, uh, solid enough to really um, uh, mm-hmm. protect the groundwater in the area. But it sounds like this might come up again now with the lawsuit. Maybe they'll go back right. to, um, I don't know. But they could formalize that agreement better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. I don't know if the town is going to bend or not. Um, I mean, the you know, the, yeah. they did reject the you know, they rejected the the zone change, which you know, I mean, unless they're going to revisit that, I mean, I, I guess the courts could um, could dictate that. I don't know. We'll so, was the town board interested in having an affordable housing um, project on that same site, even like before they started working? Um, well, well, this group started. Yeah, I mean, as Beth pointed it, out, the town approached concern um, about but like, about doing it there um, or about about doing a project there. Staff. Yes, at that at that location. But yeah. you know, again, at that time, they were talking about um, different different um, ingress and egress. That you know that yeah, they thought right. that they could connect with some of those side streets south of County Road Thirty Nine. Um, and yeah. I think that you know because they couldn't, I, I think that um, that that became a concern. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. Concern. Yeah, I was I was almost going to say something, but <laughs> I like. Yeah. Yeah. Or is there a chance concern could try doing this again elsewhere in the town on a different parcel? Well, right. the, well, the town has proposed or at least acknowledged that they would be open to some other locations. But I think concern has said that their grant funding that they have tied up in this project dictates yeah. it would have to be at that location. It's it has to be like on a church, like a church property or nonprofit. Is that how? that grant worked I, I don't know is that true I, I don't know yeah i'm not sure specifically the details of why they said it was tied to that specific spot um i I'm, exactly how the grant funding works or what, how much money they have uh, invested but well they, they i mean they said they 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 you know invested over it was a two and a half million dollars mm-hmm. in um, yeah. in, in the project lead, leading up to it. And look, I, I think that's an issue, you know, when you're dealing with with any of the, these towns or municipalities that, you know, I mean, there's developers come in and, and they invest a lot of money um, yeah. in these in these proposals. Um, and concern is, is I think it's a nonprofit. I mean, it, you know, um, and then it's a lot of money to invest when maybe if the town had not been interested, you know, or, or saw that it wasn't going to to work out initially, maybe they could have given them a rejection earlier. Um, um, although I think, you know, Beth pointed out it was the previous town board. It was former supervisor Jay Schneiderman was uh, was e- eagerly in favor of, of the project. So, you know, there was a, it, it, there was it a sort change. of seemed like before um, Jay's tenure was going to end, they uh, he tried to push they, it. They, they were to trying to aggressively you. kind of move this forward, right? And they just kind of didn't get there in time. Yeah, I mean, there was there was the secret. There was the you know he he the termination in in December, the last meeting of the town board, and and they right did, right. The, um, um, they they accepted the um, the, the secret uh, finding the study. Right. I forget what it was. Yeah, the FEIS or whatever yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, uh, and people the, were upset about that that they were even doing that part of it. Yeah, well, the neighbors were. The neighbors right. didn't want it from day one. You're listening to Behind the Headlines um, on WLIWFM. I'm Bill Sutton from the Express News Group. My co-host Annette Hinkle from the Express News Group. Panelists this week: Denise Civiletti from Riverhead Local, Joe Workmeister from Newsday, and Beth Young from the East End Beacon. Um, Beth, you wrote a, a really, a really nice, uh, a, a nice piece recently about a, uh, a church in, in Southhold that. Um, that uh, rebuilt after a fire a few years ago, and I was uh, I was really intrigued by the, by the story. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the uh, the First Universalist Church of Southold, which is a, a very old Unitarian Universalist church um, uh, from that was built in the eighteen thirties, I believe. Uh, it burned down 
in 2015, I believe. And um, they've been working for nine and a half years to come to consensus about what to rebuild and to actually rebuild. And they rebuilt a, a really beautiful church um, kind of at the gateway to, to Southold on the original location. Um, and they just had the dedication ceremony a couple of weeks back. And uh, this church has had been if you're familiar with the Unitarian Universalist Church, they've been very socially active. Um, uh, one of their big missions is um, to be involved in civic affairs. So they have they were very involved with the Maureen's Haven um, Homeless Shelter Network, uh, hosting AA meetings, hosting uh, plays and art art events and uh, interfaith dialogues. Uh, they had a, 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 a thing called the Project Genesis, which was a Catholic and Judaism discussing um, shared understandings of um, uh, holy books. So very, very uh, diverse and, and interested congregation. They, they've actually changed the name of the of the it's not called the First Universalist Church anymore. It's called the Unitarian Universalists of Southhold. Mm. Uh, they wanted to take the word church out of the name because they have a lot of people from other denominations in the church. So they're back open. They're having services on Sunday mornings. And um, it's, uh, it's a very peaceful space. And uh, uh, it's kind of remarkable that a church can rebuild in this time. Um, and, uh, it took them, a, took them a few years, right? Yeah. Uh, well, when they actually started construction, it went very quickly. So that was impressive to see. So what's the architectural style? Because I think I remember that fire. That old church was amazing. Mm. Um, did they go for a more modern type of structure or what's it look like? Can you just it's try? not a lot more. Mo it's it's white and it has big windows. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's not it's it's not as tall. I, I don't believe it's as tall as the old church. Um, uh, it does the 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 windows. If you remember the windows of the old church, they were very striking, but they were also very tall. And they uh, they built new windows that are the same shape, but they're shorter. But they echo the old church. So that's it's very interesting walking into the sanctuary and looking out those windows, and you can see the same vista that you saw through the windows beforehand. There was a mural um, behind the pulpit of the original church that was destroyed in the fire. That was really a very striking mural um painted by one of one of the big uh great painters on the north fork edith uh i don't prelwitz is her last Prelwitz. name yeah i know that name like the yeah. edith maybe um anyway uh so th so that's not there anymore but um the space is set up so it doesn't have pews so they can they can take the chairs out of the room and have um other kinds of events where people are mingling or they can put the cots in there when they have, um, when they reopen for Maureen's Haven, they won't be doing that this year, but they will be back involved with that homeless shelter network um, next year. And if you are looking right now to help people in need this winter, Maureen's Haven is start gearing back up for the year and they're a great way Getting to called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah in helping helping people who would otherwise have nowhere to stay in the winter. And there are quite a number of them around here. And uh, I think that's something that what is, uh, that's you a don't great or, see. Great, but great it, organization. It, I mean, it helps so many people. Absolutely. Yeah, it really doesn't, uh, you know, you don't have that typical church look when you just look at the inside of uh, the space here. You know, I'm looking, as you said, without without the pews and just uh, chairs set up. And I, um, there's even a TV screen, it looks like they have uh, set up. So, yeah, it's a That's really modern, modern twist to uh, going to church. They have was, a, how did that original, how did that fire start that, that um, burned the, the original building? Did they find out? Did they know? I don't know that they actually. Was it lightning? No, they had had a memorial service there the, the previous evening, um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, if they yeah I don't. I don't remember that off the top of my head. What? Exactly what caused that? Yeah, it was. It was pretty much in ruins by the time they started. Mm -hmm. It was. It was accidental. That's act, act of God. It really burnt to the ground, right? I mean, it, it was really, it really destroyed. Did. Yeah, it really did. Uh, I, I was there the next day, and and the yeah. the piano was in the wreckage, upside down, and the piano was just cinders and piano. Yeah. Piece. It was it was it was a breathtaking sight. Ridiculous. The whole thing, yeah. yeah. 
Well, we we uh, we certainly wish them luck. I mean that um, it, it's it, so that was originally built in in eighteen thirty seven. Um, and and now redone. Um, it's it's great for the community. It sounds like I've never I've never been there, but it sounds like it's a real it's a community hub and um, you know for uh, certainly fitting with with the area there. Um, we only have um, we have a, a couple minutes left, but I, I know that uh, uh, Joe, you wrote about it, and and we did as well. The uh, so the the first uh, cannabis dispensary in Southampton Town um opened up recently and and they they've got a different model right i mean it's 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 not there's no storefront you can just um it, it's it's all going to be about delivering cannabis in the hamptons this is a sharp left turn from the trip being rebuilt <laughs> yeah we're really oh, no it's not <laughs> <laughs> not that <Yeah>. church, no <laughs> yeah so what the um just this kidding. location that we're, they're selling where you can go online, buy these products, and then um, they're, they're offering uh, basically like, like a curbside deliver, del- uh, pickup or delivery. And they want to deliver from basically, you know, from uh, start of the Hamptons all, you know, all the way out to Montauk and kind of really. Um, so this is you know, brown, brown butter, not, not brown Buddha, which we all thought it was brown Buddha, but it's brown butter. It's actually brown butter. But uh, it's play, 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 play on words. I don't know how you say it. Maybe they say it Buddha, but it's right, called, right. <laughs> called Buddha. And, and, yeah, and, and so it. yeah, and so there, there's no retail where you can go inside yet. Um, they have some uh, plans that are still uh, that they're still made approvals through uh, through the planning board to, to make that happen. So it seems like they've kind of uh, found a little loophole here to get going before they can actually open a. Um, you know, open a storefront and this would be one of only a couple now so far on Long Island. There's a few out in, in Babylon town and uh, a couple potentially pending in Riverhead. One potentially could open in Brookhaven, uh, but um, you know, we're starting to see these first uh, dispensaries uh, come online after these uh, state legislation allowed this. And it's been a long go. It's been a lot of uh, difficulties for, you know, these, um, uh, people looking to open these as they found uh, the restrictions that the, the individual towns have put in place and made it challenging to find locations where these would actually be acceptable. So um, yeah, we'll, there's been a lot in Southampton proposed where people were looking to go in a lot of different uh, places. And so now, you know, how many more will come online? I'm not sure, but uh, this, this seems to be the first one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think there's going to be a couple planned in in Riverhead popping up, uh, popping up as well. And uh, this this Brown Buddha, they're um, they're selling um, local locally grown locally grown cannabis as well. Um, that's being being grown in a um, um, in uh, in East Hampton, I guess. Um, Actually, I think it's Watermill, Bill. Nova oh, is it Watermill? I'm sorry. Nova's Ark is in Watermill. I was. Nova's Ark. I'm that. sorry. Like, yeah, I was, I didn't realize that there was anybody growing cannabis locally for um, a state, you know, a, approved facility. So yeah, I found that interesting. This, this, this guy, Brown Boda, they want to, they want to use, utilize that and, and be the, uh, uh, be the Amazon of cannabis for, right, there you for, go. The, Ham, for the Hamptons. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's our time. Um, this is uh, this has been behind the headlines um, on WLIWFM. Um, I'm Bill Sutton from the Express News Group. My co-host uh, Annette Hinkle from the Express News Group. I want to thank our panelists this week: Denise Civiletti from Riverhead Local, Joe Workmeister from Newsday, and Beth Young from the East End Beacon. Uh, great show, guys! Thanks a lot. Thank you.